Okay, let's take the second construction. This is a, a much smaller construction. It's going to grow, but it, it, it's much more efficient. This is called the Michelski construction. It also proceeds by induction. Let me wave hands, and then I'll draw a picture. Suppose you have a graph for some value of t. Here it is. Triangle free, and it has chromatic number t. We want to build a new graph, which is triangle free, and has chromatic number one larger. This new graph is going to be about twice as big. Only twice. Compare it with the construction we just did. That's, this is slow growth. Here's what you do. Take your old graph, and for every vertex, put a mate. And the mates form an independent set. And then the mate has some neighbors down in the original graph. It has the same neighbors as its friend, as its partner. All right, so let's draw that. So I have my original graph. Think of it. Here it is. This is some graph G, which is triangle free and has chromatic number chi equals T. For some T, at least three. So I put down an independent set, but not much bigger, exactly the same size as G. There's one vertex in my independent set for each vertex in the graph. So for every x here, there is a mate up here. Uh, let's call it y. And y is mated with x, so y sub x. Now, this is an independent set, so there are no edges up here. If there are any edges, they are between this and this. And here's what we do. X has a neighborhood. Those are the neighbors of X. And I make its mate adjacent to the same set. But not to X. But not to X. OK, I'm not done. Now add one additional vertex and make it adjacent to everything in y sub x in y, but nothing in x. And let's call that vertex x naught. Pardon? You make it adjacent to all of them. Yeah. So, so the independent set is, let's call it capital Y. So x, x naught is adjacent to everything in capital Y, but nothing in the original graph. So if you started with m vertices, your new graph has exactly 2m plus 1 vert vertices. Is the construction clear? It's pretty simple. I can actually draw it for a 5 cycle. So. For a five cycle, I would take one, two, three, four, five. That's my original graph. Now I put down five vertices. And now they're paired up. So let's let the one on the far right be the mate of this one. So it's adjacent to this and this. I'll make this one the mate of that, so it's adjacent to this and that. This one is the mate of this one, so it's adjacent to here and there. This one is the mate of this, so it's adjacent to here and there. This one is the mate of this, so it's adjacent to here. I'm messing with you, of course. In there. Okay. Now I need one new vertex. 
And the new vertex over here is X naught, and it has edges to these guys. That's the graph for the next level, four. Contrast that with what we just did a few minutes ago. I wouldn't attempt to draw the graph for four because it had several million vertices in it. This one only has 11. Not so bad. I could probably draw the next one. How many vertices does the next one have? Pardon? No, I don't think so. I, what, what did you say? 5 plus 5 plus 1 is 11. So, 23. Wake up, wake up. Twice 11 plus 1. Twice 11 plus 1. I could draw that. It would be a mess, but I could do it. But I won't. Okay, now let's explain why the chromatic number has gone up, and let's also explain why we didn't produce any triangles. We'll start with why the chromatic number has gone up. Or, or, or if it's gone up, it's only gone up by one. Let's do that part. Here's the original graph. Here are the mates. And here's your, here's your vertex up here. Why has the chromatic number gone up by at most one? Suppose I could color the original one with T colors. Take a good coloring of this using T colors. Then that's an independent set. Use one new color on that. And then just color this with one of the old colors. So I can certainly color it with T plus 1 colors. The question is, can I still color it with T? It takes T to do this. So I, I can't do it in less than T, but maybe I can do the whole thing with this extra stuff added and still use only T colors. OK? Now, I'm going to take a pause, and I want you to see if you can explain to yourself what I just said. Try to, to explain why you cannot color this new graph with T colors. That chromatic number has gone up from T to T plus 1. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Feel free to talk to anybody around you. Try to figure out why the chromatic number has gone up. It is no longer T. It has to be T plus 1. And the obvious hint is that new vertex up there is playing an important role. Okay, let's 
Let's explain it together. This is kind of cute. I think it's cute. All right, this new vertex, uh, we're, we're assuming that you can color it with T colors, and we're going to produce a contradiction. So this is an explanation by contradiction. I'm going to assume you can do it and show that that leads logically to a contradiction, therefore you can't do it. So if you can color this with T colors, this new vertex gets some color alpha. Alpha is some, somewhere, be, say, between 1 and T. Now, there are no edges in the independent set, so they can be colored any way you like, except in the proper coloring, if this one is alpha, since we have all these edges, that means in this set, there are no alphas. I don't know how it's colored, but there are no alphas. All right, now look down here. I've colored this with T colors. I have to use them all. All colors are present down here. So, in particular, there's one or more of them that are colored alpha. And since it's a good coloring, there are no edges between any two of those. There might only be one. I don't know how many there are. I just know that there are some that are colored alpha. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to modify the coloring. But I'm throwing away the new part because the modified coloring I'm really interested in is only a modified coloring of the old graph. In this picture, old is blue. And here's what I do. I look at this vertex, which has been colored alpha. That's some vertex x. Now, I look up and find its mate. It has a mate, y sub x. What's the color on y sub x? I don't know. But I tell you one thing I do know, it's not alpha. So this y sub x has a color on it, say color beta. Beta is distinct from alpha. Now, go down here and change the color on x from alpha to beta. Did that change affect whether or not that's a good coloring? No, because it doesn't matter how you color these guys. There are no edges. The only conflict could be that with this change to beta, it's adjacent to something which is colored beta. But we know that's not the case because the mate has the same edges to neighbors as the original vertex X does. So none of the neighbors of X are colored beta. That's legal. And now we just do that systematically one by one. If I still have an alpha, pick up another one, say this one. Now, what do I do with that alpha? I go up and find its mate. Now, good computer scientists are perfectly comfortable with reusing x. So now x no longer represents this one. It's set to be this one. And I go up and I find its mate. And its mate is y sub x. It's a different x, so it's a different mate. And that mate has a color on it. Call that color beta. Is this beta the same as that beta? I don't know. What do I know about it? It isn't alpha. 
So I go down here and change this color from alpha to beta, where this beta is that beta, not that beta. And just repeat that. So at the end of the day, I've screwed up the coloring of the entire graph, but I've got a, a coloring of this one where there are no alphas. And you can't do that. You can't do that. It takes T colors to do this. And if you originally colored it with T colors and now you have no alpha, then you only have T minus 1. So the contradiction says you could not have colored the whole graph with only T colors. It must take T plus 1. That's a very clever construction due to Michelsky. Okay. That's two. Now we're, now we're going for three. I want to give you a warm-up for three. What is the vertex? Is it always something like this? Is it always just some little element? Well, no. A vertex, a vertex can be a database. A vertex can be a car. It can be a hotel. It can be a city. It can be a jet plane. It can be anything that you want it to be because graphs naturally model real-world phenomena. So you shouldn't be surprised that we begin to look at constructions where vertices aren't simple objects. They are more complex objects. And we're going to do that with the notion of a shift graph. 